Want to have the most amazing marketing tips in your hand right now? Yes, um, I know I do. Um, well, today, stay tuned with our special guest who is an absolute expert in all mm -hmm. that and more. Happy Friday, Emer and special guest. Won't mention yeah. the special, just say we want to build it up, build it up. We'll pretend we can't see her. Yeah, we can't see you, Julia. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Keep it that way. <laughs> well, no, so, it, it, it is. Uh, we always like to go to our favorite trendy tool, uh, tool um, daysoftheyear.com, a great site, mm -hmm. if you don't know it. And uh, mm -hmm. did you know, Emer and Julia, that tomorrow is Be a Kid Again Day? Well, that's quite appropriate. Yeah. Some people don't need any encouragement, do they? Eva? No, they don't. I was going to say, is it not your bedtime? You know? Um, no, no, no. All kids, all good kids go to bed early, you know? No, that's so. Well, I thought because of the data tinnitus and because mm. I am a big kid at heart that I, I might for today uh, mm. kind of give you one of my, my digital giggle kind of jokes. Just to uh, start. Uh, that, that's supposed to be banned, but I suppose I'll go, go on, go on. Today, that's special. Enough. Yeah, special, mm. special. Hopefully, drum, you, hopefully you and Julia will <laughs> like this. Okay, well, here we go. How does the moon cost his hair? Julia, any thoughts? Absolutely no idea what you Me reckon. <laughs> go on. Eclipse it. <laughs> oh, for goodness sakes. I'm doing the monkey emoji. Oh, where did you get that from? Goodness, that's, no. that's a secret treasure trove, I tell you. <laughs> right, it's bedtime. Oh, off to bed. Oh to bed. my god, that's a total, a total eclipse, Helen. Yeah, yeah, I know what I'd like to eclipse, but we won't go there. So, we won't go um, there. yeah, move it on, quick. Yeah, move it on, move it on. Ah, so listen, they say, you know, is it once, twice, three's a charm? Isn't that what they say? So yeah. um, we are joined by our oh, long time friend of the show and a great buddy um, to uh, Philip and I. And that's Julia Bramble. She's back for round yeah. three. Julia, did you not realize? Three is never a crowd with Julia, is it? No, no, never a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to be back. Thank you. Thank you for not refusing point blank. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I was just like, so I'm, I'm so honored that you want to come back to talk to us. Um, yeah. So for anyone who hasn't caught Julia in uh, her previous three shows, um, she is uh, the amazing. I, I actually, do you know what? I love the, the name of your company, Bramble Buzz. You know, yeah. I mean, that really is a wee bit different, isn't it, Philip? It's on, um, point. on point. Oh, yeah. So there's a bit of buzz we're going to have today with her. Um, she provides social media management strategy. And oh, she actually, this, I love this um, tagline, making it simple for you to get results from social media and online marketing. Making it simple. Yeah. No big words, Philip. None of that big strategy no, stuff. It doesn't, you know? it doesn't need big words. No, no I know. Sim the only thing is, yeah. yeah, the only thing I can't get over is like she's actually a PhD forensic scientist. I know. Uh, I know. I'm serious. Like, you know, I would so have I probably had enough of big words. Maybe that's what it is. Test tubes and all that kind of thing, as far as that. And your bunks and burn. Do you remember the bunks and burners? I wonder if they still have them in schools. Oh, they um, do. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I used to have, get in a lot of trouble with them, but we won't go there. Um, and um, <laughs> we'll another today. <laughs> she has lots of other skills. So that's probably why she's so good at what she does. She's an empathetic communicator and spectacularly popular presenter. Um, I want to get a few tips off her today. And now she's an author. I mean, welcome back, wow. Julia. Thank you, you so much. I no went to your talents. Huh? No went to the talents. Huh? Yeah, the strategy, mm. world life experience. Her author. Yeah. I know. I'm going to get Brenda. my pen and paper out here and write all this stuff. My head, yeah. my head is like growing. I won't be able to fit on your screen soon. Yeah, but you're really oh. off the screen now, Julia. <laughs> you know, so we'll have to shrink. She's off the Richter down. scale now. Yeah, <laughs> so you know. But no, so, the great thing about this as well is that, of course, Julia, you are staying with us for two shows. So yeah. um, make sure you tune in next week on Dublin South FM for part two. Yes. But before we do get into this great chat with Julia, if you have missed any of our previous shows, they're all up on the podcast. They're on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify. Obviously, mm -hmm. they're up on Dublin South FM. So do tune in and download and subscribe. And, and, like, course, I keep, 
as I always say, and I still can't believe I'm saying this, uh, yeah. if video is your thing, uh, go jump over onto YouTube, find the Let's Get Social show. You will see the lovely Julia, himself and myself, um, yeah. on there, um, talking and chatting and all that fun stuff. So go ring the bell, subscribe, and even leave us a comment because, you know, you could be a question that Julia has never answered before and you could actually make her day. Absolutely. Very true. That would be fab. And finally, before we dive into our conversation, um, if you have any topics or maybe there's guests you'd love us to to maybe try and get on the show, send us an email to inquiries at dublinsouthfm.ie. We'd be delighted to review and see, can we turn your suggestion into a show? So moving on before Philip decides he wants to tell another of his digital giggle <laughs> jokes. Um, Julia, what's new with you, as they say, since we last hung out and um yeah you became an author do you tell yeah well i became um a co-author i guess because a wee little book has just come out which is actually quite a big book with oh let's see do you have a copy there marketing ideas i do <gasps> we have wow. there marketing and it's lovely and shiny oh, grow I want your one. business the most amazing one. marketing book ever yes yes Yes. yes, we're not, we're not yeah. backwards and coming forwards in giving the book <laughs> this title, are we? Uh, no, like it. It is co-authored by 35 different marketing experts with over 750 years of accumulated marketing experience between us. So wow. it probably wow. is something to be said for that title. But the great Sorry, thing about I, it I was go- I was going to say, Julia, that's nearly as old as Philip then, yeah? Yeah, yeah, they've, they've got some catching up to do, but you know, yeah, you, you, <laughs> get you'll there. get there, you'll get there, you know, <laughs> yeah, you'll get there, yeah. You know. <laughs> and tell me, Julia, um, how did you feel when you were asked to contribute? Was there sort of kind of nerves? Did you do you mm. do you like do you suffer from imposter syndrome? As in, oh, I don't know if I really know what I'm doing, or did oh, you kind yes. of go absolutely oh, go yeah. for it? You know, doesn't everybody suffer from imposter syndrome? I think, I think so. so. Yeah, I, think, I so. think so. Yeah, well, it was a project that came about in um, Mark Schaefer's amazing marketing based community called Rise. Mm. Um, someone suggested the idea and Mark let me know that it was happening and suggested that I took part. And yes, massive imposter syndrome alert. Bloop, 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 bloop. (laughs) Oh yeah. uh, I kind of got over it and got on with it. But the really interesting thing was that a lot of us posted in the community while we were writing our chapters. And so many of us were suffering from the same imposter syndrome. For that. I'm so glad you brought it up because mm. so many of us, even though mm. like people have been working in their field for like 20 plus years, been getting amazing results for mm. brands and everything else, they were yeah. still thinking, am I good enough? Should it actually be me that's writing this chapter? But yeah. the wonderful thing about sharing it like that within a community is that everybody else jumped on and supported people who were saying that they were going through this for whatever reason, which was just lovely to see. Mark talks about it right at the end of the book, actually talks about how, you know, he saw people going through endless different um, emotions Mm. when the book was actually being written. And he says Mm. it was more like, he said, I've never been part of anything quite like it. This was not just a book. It was a reality show. Mm -hmm. Because he witnessed the range of feelings displayed throughout the process. Fear, compassion, anxiety, excitement, exhaustion, frustration, pride, triumph, etc. So probably being an author, when you're doing it on your own, you go through all those emotions, but we're all doing it collaboratively. Together. Amazing. Yeah, no, it's it's a tremendous achievement, you know, because, Mm. uh, you know, the goal of the experts like yourself, Mark Schaefer, um, Ian Anderson Gray. Uh, yeah, who, yeah, who, he's a contributor. He's a contributor. Mm-hmm. He'll be he'll yeah. be on the. We, we've we have a show in in, in the works with with Ian. Um, yep. It's there's so many like the amount of knowledge and the collaboration that's coming together. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a very it's going to be a very exciting um, piece to really go through and see the different perspectives and the different learnings and that essentially you can come away with a very integrated kind of strategic view as to how to approach your marketing because you have all these different kind of I suppose experiences and ways to approach Mm. certain things you know which is fantastic Um, yeah and get new insights as well Philip because sometimes you know you think you know something and you go actually I actually 
should try that angle, you know, mm. because, exactly. you know, you think, you know, and then you go on something new and then you and you mm. just go, I'm going to give that a go. So um, exactly. so is it quite practical? Is it very theory based or is there quite a lot of practicality? No, it's 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 Golden. very practical. The idea is that the ideas in the book are all very actionable. You know, you can go and and take them straight mm -hmm. away. And one of the lovely people that's reviewed the book already on Amazon said what they loved about it was the fact that it wasn't technical, so they mm. could dive yeah. in, yeah, and take ideas and put them into practice. Yeah. So they still give you enough detail that you can go out there and do them, but without sort of blowing your mind with all that technical jargon and mm -hmm. the overwhelm that so many of us feel. And yeah. the other yeah. thing they said about the book was that I really love was the fact that they felt they didn't have to go out and buy like lots of different books to cover lots of different subjects because yes. it's all there in one place. And mm -hmm. I thought, Oh yeah, you know, that's actually, that's great. Isn't it? Cause so many of us end up, well, I end up, and I guess other people are the same, but maybe you're not like buying 10 books and they sit there on this lovely pile and you kind of look at them every day and they're getting dustier and dustier and you're feeling guilty yes. and guilty. Yeah. You haven't looked at yeah. Them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, it's like a one-stop uh, shop nearly, isn't it? You yeah. know? Yeah. 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 Like, That's exactly like, the idea um, because we were all limited to the number of words that we could write. It was a thousand words. So it has to be like really pithy and on point. Mm -hmm. And within that, you have to cover 10 different ideas. So you really have to drill mm -hmm. down what it is that you want to say to the yeah. absolute bare bones and get it across. So you haven't got any room for fluff, which is great. Yeah, because sometimes yeah. you go through books and I don't know about you, Philip, when you're looking at books and you're like going, and in the next chapter we will get to, and you're going, yeah, I keep saying that. And it's just, yeah. yeah. And, and you, get you the finally get page to the And you yeah. finally get to the each, you know, you know, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like I think, like certainly, it's great that obviously a book like this, you know, spearheaded by by Mark, who's a very well known mm. keynote speaker, and I think kind of he's written quite a number of books. You know, Mark Jim Rebellion, known. I think yes. he did Content Shock as well, which I think yeah. when that yeah. came out was like mm. literally blew the doors off because it was almost yeah. like the content marketing was dead or was like it was too much content. Yeah. Um, like kind of from your perspective, how did you get to to meet Mark? And have you found that the process of going through this through this book has maybe by say you writing your chapter has it made you uh, maybe kind of look at some of uh, from the content that you've written to kind of maybe take a step back and kind of reevaluate or kind of kind of re I suppose reinvigorate your thought process when it came to. Twitter or Twitter marketing or marketing in general? Yeah, um, I got to know Mark through hearing him speak actually at mm. an event years ago. Well, it sort of coincided, me meeting him online and getting to know his stuff online mm. coincided with me um, hearing him speak at Social Media Marketing World mm -hmm. probably seven years ago now. And wow. he was brilliant, blew me away. Um, and I'd already started to get to know his content. But then shortly after that, there was an event in Scotland where they had Mark Schaefer and Anne Hanley speaking. Um, content Marketing Academy was putting it on. And I thought, well, I've just seen them in San Diego. They're absolutely amazing. I want to see them again and soak it all up again. So mm. I then went up to this event in Scotland in June the same year. And it was a much smaller event. It was like 100 people. So nice. you could really get to meet the speakers mm. easily and have conversations like with that. them. So, yeah. yeah, having sort of waved um, to Mark in the distance or maybe said hello or whatever and spoken to Anne briefly after her talk, got to actually like properly talk to them as human mm. beings over a mm. beer, which was brilliant. Yeah. And then since then, just kept in touch with both of them online. And I've seen Mark and Anne actually speak again at numerous events and it's mm -hmm. just it's kept the relationship going so yeah I've wanted to mark on and off now for years and then I saw him speak again actually last September 
at an event in Paul, again, a very small event, which is why I thought I'm going to make the effort to go along. It's just mm. centered around Mark speaking. Brilliant, because I always know that I learn incredible amounts from him. Mm. Went along, but it was the actual day that it was announced that the Queen had died. So it oh, wow. ended up being a day that was sort of oh. etched in my mind for two reasons. Yeah, of course. Crazy, yeah. really. But yeah, yeah his... Um, his talk was, of course, really, really good. But yes, it then had that other layer added to it. Yeah. Actually, where were you, uh, Philip, when the Queen died? Do you know? Do you know? I honestly can't remember. Gosh. I remember where I was. <laughs> where were you, Eva? You're going to laugh at this because it's so a coincidence. And I went, well, you're in the right place at the right time. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, I was at a uh, going to my first um uh, meeting um, up north uh, for I work with the funeral industry and it was in a room full of funeral directors. Oh, wow. it was meant to be humor, huh? It was Very probably kind of meant a, to be. Yeah. The, 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 the... Yeah. Wow. You know, so I, yeah, it just made me laugh. Well, not laugh, but it was kind of going of all the places to be and with all the people to be. Yes. And that happened. So there you go. So there wow. you go. Well, you, you and I know exactly where we were, Julia. Philip yes. was probably off with the fairies, but there you go. So oh, that's where yeah. I was. I was <laughs> running through a field of sunflowers, you know, looking to the skies and going. <laughs> good. I um, just life it. is good. Yeah. Actually, yeah. do you know what? I have to say the book title is it's actually so jazzy, isn't it? Um, mm. I, I was nearly going to call it the the amazing. Yes. The amazing yeah. marketing. I was going to say Bible. Because you were saying there's so much in it, yeah, so, yeah. People and um, and I am I'm going to get a copy now. I tell you, Julia. Um, yeah. and when it comes to yeah, and I must get you to sign up. You know, when we get to see each other. Oh again. yeah, that would um, be great. Yeah, I go and I'll go the best chapter in the book. Um, <laughs> so actually, when it comes to chapter, you were you did Twitter. Um, did. Yeah, yeah. So what was your main kind of focus with that? Was it like? How to leverage your, your Twitter account? <laughs> yeah. Well, bear in mind that when we decided what chapters we were going to write, all the chapters were allocated, um, mm. drawn up and finalised. This was September of mm-hmm. 2022. So it's before the great Twitter apocalypse that has since. Yeah, yeah I was wondering, or are you going to just talk about Elon Musk? I Thanks, just, Elon. Um, you know? yeah. yeah, no, I didn't plan to, you know. Yeah. It was like oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to write about Twitter because it's one of my favourite tools, you know. I yeah. absolutely love it. I recommend that everybody should be on there. Mm. And then all of a sudden, Twitter just kind of blows up and almost vanishes yeah. off the face of the earth. So mm. that was a wonderful choice of chapter, that was. <laughs> this should I pick TikTok? Why did I pick TikTok? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I know it wouldn't be YouTube for me, but anyway. Yeah, um, yeah so, like, I mean, there, there's been a lot of changes. But um, so, again, how did you find... Yeah your focus and to get those thousand words that must have been really challenging although twitter is like less is more with the tweets yeah twitter is less is more but when you're writing about anything really um Mm. so many of us know so much about it don't we that like yeah tendency is to go on and on so stripping it back is actually a really useful exercise but what i wanted to do was focus on tips that stand the test of time because when it's a written book you know you might pick it up in a mm. year's time, 18 months' time, and you want those tips still to, to be still relevant. relevant. Yeah. So yeah, if there were any things kicking around that were maybe like just not going to stay around necessarily, I thought I don't mm. want to stop talking about them. So, for example, I didn't talk about Twitter spaces, and mm. for a while they did actually disappear, so I was really yeah. pleased I hadn't talked about them. They have come back now. Mm. Um, so, yes, I wanted to talk about stuff that was evergreen, I wanted to talk about Twitter from the perspective of really um, the mindset and how we view it to get best results from it, rather than giving very, very sort of tactical details. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about very much using it from the perspective of trying to be more human and putting yourself into the other person's shoes and thinking about what their response is going to be and what their reaction is going to be and how mm. they might behave on seeing mm. what you put out rather yeah. than thinking about the insuency details about how many hashtags to use, for example, or, you know, where mm. you might put your emojis and things like that. Because mm-hmm. when you're looking at a broad brush strategy, um, mm-hmm. I think you need to have one core in that 
sort of number of words you need to have one core element running through it so yeah. mine was, of course looking at it from the other person's perspective mm-hmm. and being more human yeah like certainly i think it's a very interesting channel because i suppose it's like one of the the originals i suppose you'd call mm. it you know, along with kind of facebook it was like one of the originals yeah and it's like when businesses and um, say clients that you work with like when they kind of say to you listen Twitter is outdated, you know, what's the point of being mm. on Twitter? You know, how can I sell? How can I build relationships on Twitter? I need to be doing video. I'll do reels. I'll do TikToks. How do you um, sort of overcome those sort of those, maybe those challenges or those people are pushing back to say, well, Twitter has huge value, you know, based on your experience? Yeah, great question. I mean, I love Instagram and I love LinkedIn and stuff as well, but Twitter, I think, is unique because of the the just the massive number of opportunities you've got on Twitter for engagement, for actually mm-hmm. talking to mm-hmm. other people on Instagram, it just it happens less mm-hmm. often. On Facebook, you know, you've got Facebook pages and they can't really go out and talk to other yeah. human beings at all, can they? Whereas yeah. Twitter is fast moving you get little nuggets of information so you're not overwhelmed with a great big True. long screed when you go in there you yeah. can dip into something really quickly dip out but still either learn from it yourself or mm-hmm. make an impact yourself and be done and dusted in 10 minutes say yeah, yeah. Being, having actually as i said made that impact or pick something up and a lot of the other social media platforms it tends to be at the moment it tends to be more is more and people are writing like more and more stuff or yeah. creating mm. more and more like videos and you don't always just feel like going in there and spending half an hour do you mm. on something just in order to be able to engage or to post your own stuff yeah twitter is much more fast moving and it's much more short snippets Despite yes. the fact that people can now write long tweets, there are very few people actually really in the mix writing super long tweets. So, and you yeah. can ignore them if you want to. Yeah. People are writing threads, which are you know amalgamations of tweets to create a longer piece of content. Mm. But again, you'd probably only read that if you were interested yes. in the first thing. Mm. But by the same token, I think the the whole thing about it being fast moving and being like little snippets of information being shared puts people off because they can find that confusing because there's like so yeah. much going on at mm. any given yeah. point in time. Yeah. So it's it's wading through that and getting over that layer of potential overwhelm that mm. I talk to clients mm. about, like having clearly mm. seeing what it is that you're going in there to do. And that's also what I was outlining in the chapter as well, working out what it is that you want to do and then mm-hmm. going ahead and doing it. Yeah. If that yeah, makes sense. Yeah. I, I, I know people can get fearful of Twitter because they go, oh, that's too fast for me and I wouldn't know where to start and blah, blah, blah. I, I, I think it's great for going in as even as a search engine and going yeah. and seeing what's happening about a certain topic yeah. or following a certain hashtag um, anything industry related, you know, um, and, and even just be a viewer and not a doer till, you know, yeah. you start to see what way people tweet you know, um, like Philip, you're you're a great strategist, just like Julia, um, and and you you actually see there is space for Twitter, don't you? Still, like, yeah, like like, like very much so. Like, yeah, like Julie, we had um, someone now, uh, you, you know, Madeline Sklarwell, yeah, um, kind of one of the kind of originals when it comes to Twitter, and like yourself, a huge advocate of Twitter, mm-hmm. um. And something and I think you're aligned to this is that something that Madeline said was that Twitter gives you the ability to really actually connect with meaningful relationships with those thought mm. leaders and influencers. And it's very true because we you don't connected. have to follow, you don't even yeah. have to follow them. You can no. just no, yeah, you can in. make a comment or like when I connected with Madeline, I sent her a video to say this is great to connect with you. She sent me a video back. You'd never get that on any other mm. channel. No. Um like from your point, Julia, as we were saying, like Twitter has gone through and has continued to go through crazy changes and shifts. What are your thoughts on the platform as it's evolving when it comes to the features and the user experience? Are there are there positives, but maybe some negatives, or do you see in the long term that business still need to get onto Twitter? Yeah, 
to build community and uh, and take advantage of where it's going. Yeah, I it's been through a rough patch, hasn't it? I don't think we can deny that. It's <laughs> yeah. been um, mm. a rocky ride, and I know that it's lost a ton of users. Um, mm. But I know also that those who are on there have, have almost been using it more, I think, because mm. they don't want to see it going away maybe and that and they mm. are trying to make the most of it so there's been an increase in engagement on twitter mm. over the time period that we've seen a certain person in charge despite the fact that a lot of people have run away so i still think it's a valid platform to be mm. on there's still you know millions of users on there and as you've rightly said it's a place to be able to connect directly with people. Twitter search is amazing. You've got a, yeah. a normal search and then you've got advanced search. Yeah. So you can really hone down what it is that you want to, to find. You can mm. use um, you can use great logic to actually find people mm. or conversations to, to join in with. And as you said, Philip, you don't get that level of search or the ability to connect directly really on any other platform mm. because Twitter – alongside LinkedIn, I would say it's the one platform where people tend to represent themselves and yeah. don't necessarily yes. have an agency representing mm -hmm. it, apart from like if you're Pepsi or Coke or Innocent Drinks or whatever, you know, yes. that, that goes without saying. Yeah. And that, you know, that isn't going to go away. Mm. The, the problem with Twitter, I think, has been, apart from all the upset and the politics and increases in trolling and stuff that have happened. The other problem has been that the algorithm has been all over the place. And the algorithm, of course, controls what it is that we see in our feed. Mm -hmm. um, so we've now got two feeds. We've got the For You feed, which is basically Twitter putting stuff in front of you that they think you're going to like based mm -hmm. on you know what you've been responding to recently, etc. And we've got the following feed, which is the tweets of all the people that you're following, mm. which is great. And actually, the for you feed I found has been really helpful, though I know some people love it. But unfortunately, we're still finding that compared to how it used to be maybe six, mm. seven months ago, mm. um, the current feeds just aren't showing tweets from the people that whose content we used to love for whatever reason. And it mm. seems to have sort of wiped its memory. There was a cut, there was a spell about a month ago for a couple of weeks where suddenly it all came back again and it was lovely. Wow. And everyone was going, Oh, I'm seeing like <laughs> people that I haven't seen for ages. Hello, how yeah. are you? And then it all disappeared yeah. again. Yeah. So, what I'm really hoping with the new CEO is that we get some stability and that that algorithm is somehow restored because mm. that was the one thing that people, well, apart from the blue tick disaster oh but yeah one thing that people were just talking about over and over again was the fact that they felt like when they were putting stuff out they were shouting mm. into a void they didn't really feel that any of their friends were around anymore because they weren't seeing their stuff and mm. you know what that just illustrates how important it is to remember that social media is a two-way thing not yes. only do we want to be on there to share our stuff but it's also actually really important to us as human beings to know that other people that we love are sharing their stuff as well. So mm. all the stuff we say about engagement, making sure that we go out there and actually comment on other people's posts, making sure that we listen and know what other people are saying, that's actually borne out by the fact that all these people were complaining that they couldn't see mm. posts from their friends. That's actually what they're on social media for, yeah. not to just blast their own stuff. Actually, that was going to lead me to what I was going to ask you next was about mistakes that people can make on Twitter, you know, oh, yes. just posting and ghosting, as they say, and um, you need to, you know, engage not just on your own tweets, but I'd be right as well as other people's tweets. But is there any other common mistakes you see still, um, Julia, that you feel like going, if they only knew, you know what I still see, Ema, even though I didn't think I would still see it in 2023, is people still linking Twitter to networks like Instagram or oh, LinkedIn yeah. and just seeing yeah. that awful thing where it's obvious there's an Instagram photo that would go with those words and all you get to mm. see is a link, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Why yeah. are people still doing that? It's crazy. Wow. The other thing that a lot of people are still doing because they haven't thought it through and I talk about this in my chapter, is that they're using Twitter not just to 
blast their stuff out and not talking to other people and not listening to other people. Mm -hmm. But the stuff that they blast out tends to be links back to their own blog, to YouTube, to their podcast. And if you think about it, what you're then asking someone to do is you are asking them to hop across to a website they've maybe never gone across to before, Mm -hmm. read through a blog, listen to a podcast or watch a video, all of which is going to take you, what, three to 20 minutes, and then come back and have a conversation with you on Twitter about it. Like, it's not going to happen, is it? Mm -hmm. So that's the, the one way that people can really start to raise their impact on Twitter is to remember to actually put value within the tweet itself and mm -hmm. don't expect people to jump off Twitter and go across to another website to take that content on board. They want to see it in front of their faces now. Mm. So that's a common mistake that I see people making all the time. And obviously it happens on other social media platforms as well. But Twitter seems to be the place, I think, where people were doing it a lot, say, 10 years ago, and they mm -hmm. were actually getting people to go and read their stuff, whereas they just don't do it anymore. I mean, you, there's a big yeah. emphasis, like, say, for example, with Instagram, um, is like, you know, go check out the link or now links in yes. my bio, yeah. um, where I think some people say, I need to get as much into this tweet, you know, that I can get maybe like three or four links in um, into the tweet. Oh, yeah. And that looks awful, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, I'd rather say, look, you know, less is more just, you know, yeah. and then get people to ask you a question, maybe as a comment, you know, that mm. way. Um, and then yeah. say, oh, here, well, if you want to find out more. You know? Yes, absolutely. If they're yeah. already interested. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Then send them the link. And you'll see a lot of people doing that. I mentioned threads and it's a new way of being able to give people more information on mm -hmm. Twitter. Yeah. So you create one tweet. And then you create a tweet that follows directly on and another and another, if you like. And mm. people are using those very effectively. And the last tweet, you will, you can then add a call to action and say, you know, if you're interested, go and check out this blog or subscribe mm -hmm. to my newsletter or go and mm. check out my YouTube channel, whatever it is. Because by then, someone's invested time in you and they're obviously interested. They've obviously got some value from you. So mm -hmm. they're more than likely to take the next step with you. But if you're asking them to do it straight away before you've given them anything at all to, yeah. to go by, they're very, they're very unlikely to do it. So, yeah, I think threads are a good one. Um, I actually yeah. did, I think it was uh, a while back, I put one up for regarding WhatsApp business because they're bringing out even more features and the benefits that that will help a small business. And um, I ended up doing a thread, you know, and there was about eight benefits. So it was when? one of eight, two of eight, three of eight. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I felt, you know, oh, oh, first benefit. Oh, second. Oh, what's the next benefit? You know, that yeah. way. So, yeah. you know, um, sometimes that can kind of give people food for thought. Um, thankfully, I don't like put things up like recipes, Philip, or, oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. I had to say yeah. that. Because I know he's waiting for no it. No more baking, <laughs> please, huh? No more baking. But listen, I'm 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 sorry to say that uh, we have started to come to the end of this first show. No, yeah, that's gone very quickly. But I, I suppose when you're getting great information, and thank you, Julia. I suppose time yes. flies. So uh, maybe we so. can keep this thread going into the next show. I think so. Oh, yeah, so yeah. To... Oh, I had to get that pun in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so. So, Julia, thanks so much for joining us for the first show. Um, wh oh, where would you like people to go if they can't catch the second show? What would you like to sort of... Oh, well, you can't find me on social media. That would be fab. I love chatting over there. So I'm cool, at cool. Julia Bramble. Wherever wherever you happen to hang out, you can find yeah. me at Julia Bramble. Brilliant. And, and is the book any... on Amazon? Sorry, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The book yeah. is on Amazon. The most Ooh. amazing marketing book ever. Yeah. Yeah. You won't forget that title in the hurry or no. forget no. what the actual cover looks like because yeah. AI generated crazy image there. Wow. Do you actually, do you have a hashtag for that or is it like that? Would be yeah. Really the long. hashtag is amazing marketing book. Right. Well, that's not too long. Yeah. You heard, yeah. It, you heard it here. So, yeah. Well, definitely. Um, if you enjoyed today's show, you'll be able to catch it again very soon on our podcast on Podbean, iTunes and Spotify. And of course, on the Dublin Celta Femme website, hopefully early next week. Yes. And again, if video is your thing, go join Julia, Philip and myself over on YouTube and you can see the book and hear her as well talk about it. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and uh, just once again to remind you, if you have any ideas for topics for shows or maybe there's guests you'd love mm. to 
have uh, that maybe we have on the show, inquiries at Dublin South of M.ie. Drop us an email. Let us know how we're doing. We'd be delighted to take on board your ideas. Yeah. Maybe they want Julia back for fourth, fifth, sixth time. You yeah, never know, know, Philip. Yeah. yeah so, know. but anyway, stay tuned. She'll be back again for the next show. So, Thank absolutely. You. So, take care. Bye bye. Bye.